Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Love, Sex, and Magic with me, your host, Mel Wells. Today's episode is a Q&A episode with you, our beloved community. So I have selected five questions that have come in from you guys on Instagram story. So if you watch my Instagram stories, thank you for taking part in this. And in this episode, I'm going to be answering some of your juiciest questions that have come in. So let's get on with the episode. So the first question has come in from Sue McDonnell and she writes, how did you manifest love after heartbreak? And this is a question that has come in from several of my community members when I did this, when I asked for questions. The first thing that I want to say is when you've had your heart broken, the first priority is not how am I going to manifest love, right? When you've had your heart broken, your first priority should be how can I tend to myself? How can I take care of myself? How can I heal from this heartbreak? How can I really take care of the little girl inside of me that feels so abandoned and so rejected and so hurt? So when you've had your heart broken, it's not about getting into the dating scene. It's not about looking for love. It's about how can I become the love of my own life? How can I really put all of my attention and focus onto my own healing, my own self-love, my own well-being so that I can really come back into wholeness from this experience and not just come back into wholeness, but like really come into a higher, more up-leveled, more evolved version of myself. And so for me, that was really the focus. It was like, right, all hands on deck for my healing (laughs) for a long time. I was like, I'm going to put all of my energy and focus on being the love of my own life. On top of that, I think it's so important after heartbreak to really surround yourself with friendships, with community, with sisterhood. You know, love is all around us. There's really no reason for a relationship ending for you to feel like there's no love in your life. So I started bringing more romance and joy and playfulness to the friendships in my life, to my family members. I started organizing trips and special occasions and fun things that I could do with my friendships, with my girlfriends, with my family members. And I truly created this life that was just so full of love that I never felt that there was a lack. I never felt like there was a hole waiting for some guy to come in and fill it, right? So I really created a life that felt so full, so whole, so full of love and vibrancy and aliveness that I didn't feel like I was looking. And I think it's really important when you're single to be really honest with yourself about what you're actually ready for, right? If you've just had your heart obliterated, it's going to take a little while for you to actually feel like you're ready for real love again, right? Even if you've done all of the healing work, healing still takes time, right? So I was really, really honest with myself for the longest time. I was like, God, I'm just not ready yet. So like, send me some fun, send me some adventures, send me some experiences. I want to go on dates, but I'm not looking for my person yet. And I was super, super clear with that. And I wasn't consciously manifesting and calling in my husband. Like I wasn't doing that for the longest time because I knew in my soul, I knew in my body that my heart just wasn't ready for that yet. My yoni wasn't ready for that right? Because the heart and the yoni are so connected. And so I wasn't ready sexually to like fully open to another person and let them in either. And I had to be really honest with myself and really patient with myself too. Now, I think there comes a time when you start to realize, wow, I have really filled up my own cup. My life is so full. I feel so fulfilled. I'm actually feeling like I could be ready to call in new love. And when that happens, it's the most exciting, it's expansive and kind of scary moment. And when that happened for me, it was so, um, it was scary 
when I realized that I was ready, I was actually on one of my retreats. I was hosting a retreat for the Queendom, which is my mastermind. And we had this ceremony on the very last night where we were all writing out our visions and we had a little microdose of psilocybin and we had this ecstatic dance ceremony and it was just so incredible under the full moon. And I decided, okay, I'm going to write out my vision. I'm going to really tap into what I want. And the first thing that I wrote down was, I'm ready for my future husband. I'm ready for my future family. This is what I'm calling in. And it surprised me because I it was the first time since my last breakup, which had been almost a year ago, that I felt truly ready to call that in. So I called it in. I deeply embodied it. I felt it. I tapped into the feeling of how this relationship would feel, how my future man would be, how he would make me feel, how our relationship would feel. And I fully, fully felt it. And then I danced all night and I just released and I just surrendered it into the universe. And very shortly after was when my new love walked into my life. And very quickly, I realized that it was indeed him. So be careful what you wish for, because we are powerful manifestors, right? And we start really calling something in, especially when we're, f- when we're calling it in from an embodied and aligned and ready place. That's when real magic can occur and it can happen really fast. So thank you for your question, Sue. So the next question comes in from Yogi's Art and she asks, Mel, can you walk us through your success story? When did your business pick up and how? So I don't know how long you've been following me or been been along, been part of this community, but I've been doing this for quite some time. I actually got started in 2013, which was when I first decided that I wanted to become a coach. And at the time, I really wanted to become a health coach. I had been struggling with food, eating disorders for a long time. My dad had recently passed away from cancer, and I was really invigorated by the idea of learning about health. I wanted to learn how we could become more healthy, live longer lives. And I also really wanted to heal myself from this challenging relationship and disordered path that I had been on with food. So I decided to become a health coach and did that training in 2013. When I graduated from the health coaching school, I was so thrilled and I started getting my first one-on-one clients. And this was so exciting for me. And I was still juggling a bunch of other jobs. I was teaching yoga. I was doing a bunch of different commercial modeling. I was doing acting and auditions and things like that. I was working at a hotel reception as well. I was just doing all these different random jobs. I was doing promotional work. (laughs) I just wanted to do things that were flexible, right? I've always been someone that has felt trapped Um, in a nine to five doing the same thing. And so even when, even before I started my business, I was always had my hands in lots of different things because that was what felt the most flexible for me and created the most freedom. So I was juggling all these different things, had my one-on-one clients and really started developing and honing my coaching practice. And what I was really helping women with was I was helping them to heal their relationship with food in the same way that I had been healing my relationship with food. Now, when it really started taking off was probably like a couple of years later, I had been doing one-on-one coaching for one, maybe two years. And in 2015, I decided that I wanted to create my first online course. And this was the Intuitive Eaters Academy, which you can still sign up to. It lives on my site. If you want to completely transform your relationship with food, you can sign up and take that course. And it's been revised and redone a bunch of times. So it's still fairly new. Um, But at the time it was called, the Green Goddess Academy, I believe. And the academy, this online course, was really all of my knowledge and all of my tools and wisdom, all to help women completely transform their relationship with food. And it was my heart and soul. It made me so happy. I loved all of the women that came into it. Just It just lit me up from the inside out. And so I really focused on that one signature program for a long time. So I was doing launches um, just of that program, taking the women through the program, celebrating them at the end. I would throw a big party for everyone in London and get everyone together to celebrate that success. And we would just keep launching that program every six months. 
Now, what happened was I really started to see the incredible results that women were getting from this program. And that's when I realized, wow, this really needs to be a book. I need to write a book. And so while this program was taking off, I started pitching myself to book publishers. And in 2015 was when I landed my first book deal to write The Goddess Revolution, Make Peace With Food, Love Your Body and Reclaim Your Life. So that came out in 2016. So I would say around 2015, 2016 was when the book and the program um, really kind of that took things to a whole nother level. Um, on top of that, I just started running my first retreats, which were just adding another component to the business. So that's when things really started taking off. Um, and things started feeling like, wow, this is, this is really my career. Like there's really, I'm really doing this. Like people really want what I'm teaching and what I'm coaching and, and who I am in the world. This feels really, really aligned. So that was the first book. And then that led to the second book deal that led to me starting to shift out of the food space after that. So bear in mind, I was in the niche of helping women transform their relationships with food for, I want to say like five years. I really did like a decent amount of time in that niche before I was really ready to expand and evolve. And I started becoming more interested in all these different topics, spirituality, healing, personal development, feminine energy, embodiment, the archetypes, manifestation, business, and all of these other things. So I would say that having that niche and really sticking to it really, really helped me in the beginning. Um, after the second book came the membership, which we launched in 2019. The membership has been one of my favorite things ever to create because it's so evolved and there's so many different components to it. And the community is so incredible. And it's just, we're just all growing together. So I really wanted to create something that my audience could grow alongside me because I felt like I was growing so quickly and I wanted to bring my community along with me. So that was 2019. 2020 was when we launched this podcast. So it wasn't in person in 2020. It was all on Zoom, but that was 2020. And I believe that was when I also got my third book deal, 2020. Um, and then we did the Mastermind, the Queendom. We did the first ever Goddess Collective Members Retreat. And here we are today. So as you can see, it's it wasn't an overnight success. You know, I think a lot of people see someone doing what I'm doing and they think, what was the one thing that she did? What was the one thing that she created that just made her take off? And it really isn't like that. There were many things over the course of eight years now. Um, and I'm just going to keep building and keep creating. And that's the way that I see this work and this industry. I'm in it for the long haul. And if you want to do something similar to what I'm doing, I really encourage you to really commit to the marathon, not the sprint. It's not going to be one thing that completely changes everything, but I would say that it was that consistency of sticking to one message in the beginning um, that really helped. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. I hope that was a helpful, thorough answer. So this next question comes in from what Kaylee saw. And Kaylee has asked, what am I looking forward to most in motherhood? I think what I'm looking forward to most is family outings, <laughs> like feeling like a family and going on like family trips and family days out and just feeling like a little, a little unit. Um, having a family has always been the biggest dream that I've had. Um, I deeply love my family and very connected to them. And so it's such a dream come true to be creating our own family. And probably the least, the thing that I'm least looking forward to, I would say is probably the lack of sleep. Sleep has become so, <laughs> so important to me during pregnancy. I'm sleeping about 10 hours a night currently and it's, it's so needed. I can't function if I don't have like a really deep, good sleep every night. So probably not looking forward to that the most. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. So the fourth question comes in from BB and BB asks how to reconnect with your pleasure. 
So pleasure is such a huge component of the feminine, the feminine energy. So when I read your question, how can I reconnect with your pleasure? What I really feel is this is a deep calling to reconnect with the feminine. And what that really looks like is slowing down. You know, we live in such a fast paced world that it can be really hard to just take a beat and just slow down. So I would really advise, you know, getting off your phone, really like taking the time to unwind yourself from this world, right? Take yourself off the internet, um, create a beautiful sanctuary space in your home, put on some music, practice the art of doing nothing, right? The feminine and pleasure is really about doing less and being more. If you think about when we eat a meal, when we eat really fast and we're just like shoveling it down, watching something on our laptops, texting at the same time, how much pleasure are we actually getting from that meal? Hardly any at all, right? We're not even tasting what's going in our mouth. Whereas if we really slow down what we are doing, if we just focus on the meal that we're eating, if we just taking in the vibe, we're going to get so much more pleasure from that entire eating experience, right? So if you want to experience more pleasure, we have to be willing to press pause and slow down. After you have felt that like, recalibration of your nervous system and really relaxing into the present moment, that's when you're going to feel way more inspired to do things like pampering yourself, taking a bath, um, beautifying your home, self-pleasure, massage, all of these beautiful, luxurious, invigorating pleasure rituals. But the first step really is to do less, remove the distractions, remove the technology, and just unwind and slow down. A really powerful way to reconnect with your pleasure, and it's actually so quick, so instant, is to put on your favorite playlist and just dance around the house. Honestly, like I try and do this every day. I put on my favorite playlist and I just let my body move. I let myself dance. And, you know, bonus points if you are doing it naked or in front of your mirror or you're just catching a glimpse of yourself and you check yourself out and you're like, damn girl, you look good, <laughs> right? So yeah, dance is just such a beautiful and quick way to infuse more pleasure into your life. So thank you, Bibi, for your question. And the fifth and final question comes in from Kartini. And she asks, how to truly move on from a person you had a deep connection with who ghosted you? So firstly, I'm so sorry that that happened. I know that can be devastating in the moment when that happens, especially if you feel like you had a deep connection. But something that I always try to remember, like, and this was so, so powerful for me um, when I was single, is we want to be with someone that's choosing us, right? So if someone was texting you and messaging you and you felt like you had this connection and then they just disappeared out of nowhere, then please be grateful for that, right? That is a blessing because clearly that person was not your person. Clearly that person was not meant for you. Clearly that person was not choosing you and you so deserve to be with someone that is fully choosing you, right? So the thing is, right, when someone ghosts us or when we we might have been the person to ghost, we really have no idea what why. We really don't know, right? It's not that that person is a sociopath. It's not that that person is crazy. It's just, we don't know. Like we have no idea why that, why that is, right? It could be that they met someone, could be that um, something happened in their life. We just don't know. So I think let's not make up stories. That's the first thing. Um, it could be, it could have happened for a multitude of reasons, but the bottom line is if you were truly important in their life, if you were their person, if that was meant to be, then I don't think that would have happened, right? So really come back to, I deserve someone who fully chooses me. I deserve to be with someone who wants to be with me. 
and truly like be in prayer and gratitude for the universe moving this person out of your way, right? Because when we get hung up on someone that's not choosing us or hung up on someone that's distant or one minute they're there, the next minute they're gone, you know, we are, we're filling that space in our lives with a person that doesn't actually want to be there, right? As soon as the universe clears that person out of your way, out of the path, out of your life, guess what? There's space then for a new person to come in who is going to be way more aligned, who's going to be really into you, really into the connection, and who isn't going to just disappear. So whenever I've had people in my life that have been there, been in, and then just suddenly disappeared, I've been like, wow, thank God. Thank God I saw this now, and thank God it didn't happen later. So I'm wishing you all the best. So thank you, beloved listeners and community for submitting these questions. I love to do these Q&A episodes and connect with you even deeper. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a beautiful week and I hope your life is filled with love, sex and magic. See you soon. So my loves, I hope that you loved that episode. If you did, please do share it on Instagram. I would love to see your story tags of you listening to the episode. We love to hear which episodes you guys have loved the most. Please also make sure that you leave us a juicy review on Apple, iTunes or the podcast app because that means so much to me and it really helps this podcast spread far and wide. So thank you so much for listening. I love you. I hope your week is filled with love, sex and magic and I'll see you next time.